symmetry. For centuries, cryptography was practiced with the assumption of symmetry between the encryption key and the decryption key. No one doubted that this is a must. We had the standard layout. Plain text is fed into the encryption box, the encryption algorithm, together with an encryption key. What comes out is the ciphertext. Ciphertext is flowing through insecure environment, arrives at the reader of the ciphertext, and he or she puts it into the decryption box, together with the decryption key, to reproduce the original plaintext. And the assumption that prevailed is that the two keys are the same, one and the same, or symmetric. Because this is undoing what this does. The decryption is operationally the undoing of the encryption. So it was reasonable to assume that those two keys are the same. And it was not until the 70s of the last century that cryptography has had this epiphany, this insight, that this premise is not a must. It's not necessary that the encryption key and the decryption key will be the same, the same number, the same value. It's not necessary. All that is important is that this key, together with the ciphertext, will undo the encryption and reproduce the plaintext. So the thought was, let's see if something good can be done from breaking this assumption, from making those two keys unequal to each other. But that was not all. If the two keys are unequal, but if I know this key, I can easily derive this key, and if I know the decryption key, I can easily derive, calculate, find the encryption key, then there is no benefit from the fact that they are different. Because if you have one, it's like you have both of them. So you could say that the two keys are the encryption and decryption key. Everyone who knows one knows the other. In order to make the beautiful things that have sprung out in cryptography, it's, uh, all this e-commerce and, uh, and uh, digital signature and uh, verification of identity and authentication of message, etc., 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 all those good things, for them to be a reality, it was not sufficient that those keys will be distinct. It was also important that if you have one key, it's not very easy to compute the other. In other words, they should be mutually underivable. Now, that's ideal. But if you think about it, they cannot really be strictly mutually underivable. You cannot lay a demand that from K, E, the encryption key, you cannot be able to deduce the decryption key and vice versa. Why? Because regardless of the fact that they are different, operationally, operationally, they are symmetric. What this key does, this key undo, undoes. And that is why 
Eventually, if you have this key and you have enough time and big enough computers and fast enough com uh, computer processors, you will be able to derive this from this and vice versa. So we cannot have a perfection where if you have one key, you cannot compute the other. But we can. And that is the crux of the innovation. We can find such mathematics, and we will go into this, we can find such mathematics that will make it so difficult to calculate this from that, or that from this, one key from the other, so difficult, that by the time that our adversary will be able to do so, it will be too late. It will take him too long. It will not be done in a timely manner. And that is sufficient. It's not ideal. But from a practical standpoint, if you cannot do it on time, it's as if you cannot do it. And once these two concepts hit the cryptographic community, that the keys can be different, and the keys can be such that while it's possible to compute one from the other, it's very difficult, very intractable to do so. Once those two ideas coagulated, a race took place into looking for a proper mathematics that will ensure this distinction and intractability. We'll go through the math, but the concept of symmetry and asymmetry, which is the innovation, is that we can have one person, Alice, encrypt a plaintext with an encryption key, don't give her the decryption key so that she herself cannot decrypt what she just encrypted. Why? Because she doesn't have the decryption key. And we can give Bob the decryption key to read a message that Alice wrote to him, but he cannot write a message that will be decrypted with his decryption key because he will not have the encryption key. And he will not have computers fast enough to derive the other key from the key that he has. That is the innovation of asymmetry that created a new world of cryptographic useful tools, as we will see down the road.